Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today we're going to explore the riddle of Roman concrete. So stick around. Today I want to shift gears and try to revive some ancient technology. Now credit is given to the Roman Empire for the discovery of concrete, or what we think of as modern concrete. They had several different mix designs for different construction applications, meaning the higher they built upward or vertically, they use a lighter mix design. Versus say, I want to build a bridge over a body of water, I'm going to go with a hydraulic mix, that way it sets underwater. Their basic mix, however, was nothing more than lime mortar or lime concrete lime cement, which is what this is right here. And it was weather resistant and it actually got stronger over long periods of time, meaning decades or hundreds of years. So today I want to go ahead and go through that process. Let's get started. The basic Roman concrete mix design consisted of volcanic ash, limestone or shells, and aggregate, meaning volcanic rock. Now a real quick way to tell whether or not you have limestone is to grab some household vinegar. Place it inside of an eyedropper and then gently drop it onto the stone. If it fizzes up kind of like soda, then there's a good chance that's limestone. So now you've collected your limestone and you've determined 100% that it is limestone, go ahead and take all that limestone and place it into a campfire or a forge and you need to superheat it. You want to heat it for a good 3-4 to four hours until it glows red hot. At this point, the carbon dioxide is removed from the stones, making them a lot lighter. And there's your stones right there, they're glowing red. I'm going to fast forward here about three hours. You see it's glowing red still. And as I mentioned before, the carbon dioxide has been removed and it becomes calcium oxide, which will react with water. There's your limestone or calcium oxide. Once you add water to it, an exothermic reaction takes place. It generates heat. If you notice, the stone's breaking down right here. The slaked lime is what it's called when you add water to it. It's slaked, it's quick lime, and it's being hydrated, so it becomes calcium hydroxide. And that's what you're going to use as one of your core ingredients for your concrete. This right here is a small test. You want to do it on a larger scale. Just remember, once you add the water, only add enough water to make it into a paste or a putty. Once it dries out, it will be light and fluffy, and you'll add the rest of your ingredients along with water to create your concrete. Now for those who can't locate limestone, another good source of pure limestone is the ordinary seashell. I believe these right here are scallops. Just place them into a propane foundry, forge, or even a campfire and superheat them until you notice the shells breaking apart or breaking down. Go ahead and remove them, let them cool, add water, the same exothermic reaction takes place, you become slaked lime, take that lime powder once it cools off and add the rest of your ingredients. The sizzling noise is because of the exothermic reaction taking place with the water. The water is replacing where the carbon dioxide came from. It's actually generating a lot of heat right now. And you can see the shells breaking down and forming that paste. Once that paste dries, it will fluffen up. I can add that to my volcanic ash and pumice.
All right, time to get started. There's our powdered limestone or our calcium hydroxide. We have our volcanic ash and our pumice. Using my blender, I grabbed the uh, volcanic ash and I blended it up, actually ground it up pretty good because I want a really fine powder. Here's our aggregates. On the left, we have pumice. And on the right, we have volcanic tuff. I'm going to add my limestone powder first or my calcium hydroxide. Now the misconception is we're going to think about this like modern concrete. We're going to dump a bunch of water in there. Big fat negative. You want just enough water to create a thick paste. What you're going for is you're going for the consistency of Play-Doh. So keep that in your head. You want Play-Doh. A real thick paste. It sort of resembles drywall plaster. Our calcium hydroxide is good to go. I'm going to add my volcanic ash. Now real quick, let me back up. You want the ratio to be 1 to 2, meaning for every 1 pound of calcium hydroxide, you want 2 pounds of volcanic ash. So right now I added about 1 pound, so it's a 1 to 1. I'm going to mix that up thoroughly, keeping it in our Play-Doh consistency, then I'll add my second pound. And last but not least, our aggregate, meaning our volcanic rock, pumice, tuff, etc. And when it's all said and done, this is what you're going for right here. Now you can see from that clip right there, the concrete resembled Play-Doh. I could work it in my hands and it didn't stick to my fingers or hands whatsoever. So what the Romans did is they would take that Play-Doh concrete and they'd put down a layer. Then they would grab fist sized rocks and those rocks could be ordinary rocks, volcanic tuft, volcanic rock, pumice, etc. And they'd work it into that paste all the way down that line. Then they'd come back to the opposite end and grab some more of the concrete that resembled Play-Doh and they'd put it across the top of those rocks. Then with special metal or wooden tools, they would go ahead and they would force by tapping that concrete into the pores of those rocks all the way down the line and just repeat the process. At this point right here, we're pretty much good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up my concrete form. I want to fill it up in two layers, then I want to consolidate those two layers using a wooden tamping tool.
And when it's all said and done, we'll go ahead and finish it off. And I'll let it sit for anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. Now let's go ahead and fast forward. I allowed these samples to cure for seven days. If you notice I'm scratching it, I'm going to hit it right here in a few seconds. It sounds solid. There's no damage occurring. It looks pretty good to go. Now this sample right here, if you notice, you can see small rocks in there. They're about 3 8 aggregate. So I went ahead and I replaced the pumice with ordinary rock just to see if there'd be any difference. And to be honest, they both came out exactly the same. Now this material is weather resistant, but not waterproof. If you notice, you can see how porous it actually is. All those bubbles were waters rushing inside that concrete. Now what they found recently is that the Roman concrete was just like this, with the exception that they used seawater. And the ocean water actually would soak into these structures and it would bond with the minerals and create new minerals. And it would replace those holes, solidifying it and making a gigantic rock. These two samples right here have set for 24 hours and as you can see, there's still no damage to them. That's good to go in my book. Today's experiment was on basic Roman concrete, or lime cement, lime concrete. What you see in front of you right here is my first attempt at Roman hydraulic concrete, meaning it sets underwater. The downside to this, it could take days, weeks, or even months for it to fully cure. So I'll keep an eye on this, and maybe we'll do a part two if it works out. Welcome back, that was outstanding. Success or failure, you decide. Now along with that, I'm in no way suggesting that this should ever replace modern concrete. However, with that said, think about the big picture. If you were in a long-term situation or the crap hit the fan, it would be nice to be able to create building materials off the landscape, say to reinforce some shelters. Just my humble opinion. Thank you for your comments, views, support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the woods, have some fun, and I'll catch you next time.